Okay, so we'll be continuing where, where we left off in the previous video. Let me just show you what we've done so far in Construct, Construct 2. We have a player character that can move left and right, crouch, crawl to the left and right, or double tap to run. And in the previous video we showed how to change the animation states when different keys are being pressed and how to record the key presses so that you could do a double tap and things like that so I was thinking in this video we'll add some animations and uh, make some combo attacks okay so this again this will be unedited so you could just see the whole thought process that goes into it and so like the previous uh, uh, previous video, this might uh, be a, li a bit long, but we'll see how it goes. So we need to add some new animations. I'll just I'll just copy this other animation here and name it attack one. And just to be quick about it, I'll just color this a specific color like that. And then duplicate it and create attack two. Change the color. Just so that we have something to work with. And also, um, Maybe duplicate this a few times, the frames, just so that we could see that it's changing a bit. So that we could see when the animation finishes. And then do the same thing for this other one. And there's just placeholder animations. Obviously, if you're creating your own video game, you'd make this look a lot better. So we have a couple animations in the player character. Now, let's organize this a little bit. We Let's add a group and call it animation. And then let's move all of this into that group the animation group or maybe control group whatever you want to call it since our focus is with animation we'll just call it animation now we want to be able to check uh, a certain number of key presses a sequence of key presses and see if it's a specific combination of keys okay like down down forward forward or left right down forward whatever combination of keys you want to use so we have an event on any key pressed and it stores the values in an, uh, in an array. We did we did this in the previous video. Stores the key code, the string value of the key code, and the tick count when it was pressed, so that we could find how quickly the keys are being pressed. So it stores all that. Now, I'm thinking we could add a local variable in this group and call it something like key se sequence and make it a text variable and static, which means it 
keeps its value uh, as the game runs. So whatever it's set in the events, it keeps it for the next time all the events get ran through. Okay, so we have this local val variable key sequence. And what I'm thinking is it'll we'll add all the string values of the keys into this value, okay? And we'll just record like uh, five or ten, whatever, whatever number because we might have different actions take different number of key presses so maybe just five keys five letters um, but if you know that you're not having any more than three keys in the sequence then you can just do three letters so basically when a key is pressed we'll need to um, Set the value of the key sequence and get um, the last four characters. Actually, let's do the last three characters. Um, so, how do we do that? right and then key sequence three so what that does it gets the last three characters in this variable and then we'll need to add the new key uh, string value. To do that, keyboard object, string from key code, and then change this parameter to last key code. Okay. So now, if you run it in debug, I'll show you how the variable changes as we press different keys. So we have, here's the local variable right here, as you can see, key sequence. Now as we press keys, that changes. Oh, it seems to only be, only be storing two characters for some reason. Let's figure out why it's doing that. Okay, so we have on key pressed key sequence set key sequence to key sequence three. bit odd. Let me check the expression description. Right, returns the last n characters of a string. Put three, but it's only That is very weird. What if I put four? What happens if I put four?
as you can see these this is certain issues m you might face when you develop things so now it's it's uh, it's weird store in two sometimes it's store in two sometimes it's store in three as you can see I'm not sure if it's how the recording looks sometimes it's three sometimes it's two my guess is We could just key sequence. Keep adding it. Just keep adding the keys to the key sequence, and then actually, this might not be that different. See how that works. That's basically the same thing that I just did but with different with an extra event. And now it's just one. That is very weird. Maybe because there's n it starts with the zero characters. What if I, you know, initially set it with some characters like one, two, three? Let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, now it's working. So I guess because it didn't start with enough characters, it was returning maybe some null characters, undefined characters. So let's put this back. Is it? was before just make it one event like that okay so that was a little little problem we had to fix or get around so now it's recording the last three keys that were pressed actually that Let's just do it as we had it before. So key sequence and we add add the new key and then we truncate it to just the last three keys. Basically removing the first character in the string. Alright. Okay, so <laughs> are you with me? Anyways. This is unedited. <laughs> okay, so animation key sequence equals one, two, three on any key press. Key sequence will change to, to have the last keys. Okay, so now we need an, a, uh, an attack to perform when the key sequence 
equals something. So let's add an action compare variable key sequence equals to um, let's say mm, down down right so let's make uppercase s s and then d okay so that's down down right so when we press that we want the animation to change to attack one all right Okay, so we can maybe put a trigger once while true. So the first time that this key sequence equals that, it'll trigger once attack one animation. Um, but we also have these other events. So if D was pressed and it's being held down, it would change it to one of these other animations. So the attack one would never play because it would immediately get set to these other animations because D is being pressed. So we have to somehow prevent these other animations from playing when the attack one animation is, is played. Okay, so to do that, um, we can have another value here. Just copy that one, change it to attacking. Make it a number static attacking is zero. So we could set that value to one when the character is attacking. And there's other ways you could do it. You could use an instance variable set on the player object. Um, We'll just use a local variable in this group static so that, yeah. And then create a new event below, compare variable attack equals zero. Then we can drag these other other events into this. So that if it's not attacking these other events will run. Now we'll also need an event when the attacking when the attack animation finishes. Attack one finishes. Set the attacking value back to zero. And that way when it finishes these other events will run will become active again so let's try that see what happens okay so left to right you can run crouch crawl now if we press down down right the attack animation played and then we can continue moving around down down right attack animation plays down down right down down right, down down right. And if I try moving while the attack animation plays, you can't because those e events aren't running. So that's cool. Although if we do it for the other side, down down left, down down left, nothing happens because we just did it for the right side. Okay, and now, so it's attacking the, you'd have to add other events to 
compare if like if there's an enemy next to it within a certain distance then do some events so that the enemy gets hit and you know dealt damage and things like that but that could be for another video so let's see let's add let's add some uh, timing to it because we could press down down right very slowly and it would still it would still run see let me show you like down down right and it still ran down down right Okay, so we might want that to be quicker. So what we you'd have to do is basically do the same thing we did with the running condition where we compare the last the current tick count with the last tick count of when the keys are pressed. But in this case Um, and a blank sub event paste it in there in this case instead of doing the previous key we'd have to check um, the third uh, the key before the previous key. <laughs> so instead of minus two, we do minus three. So we check the last key and then the key before the previous key. The tick counts. Now we subtract them from each other, and then we could say if it's if it's a uh, half a second between those, then perform the action. Or Three fourths of a second would be point seven five. Let's try that. Let's try. Oh, oops! I forgot to uh, drag these into this sub event. That way, these actions only perform if the time is um, within three fourths of a second from each other. So let's try running it. Okay, so down, down, right. See, nothing happened. Down, down, right. But if we do it quickly, down, down, right. Down, down, right. It performs action. Down, down, right. 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 See so, and you might, uh, you might want to tweak the timing so that maybe it's a little quicker that you have to press them, or slower depending on what you want. Okay, so now let's for the other side. You would just it would be S S A, and basically it would be the same thing. So. Let's see here. I wonder, let me just check something. If I'm facing left and I press down, down, right. Yeah, he continue face he continues facing left. Down down right because the events for moving right doesn't uh mirror him back. Because yeah. So let's let's copy that. Not mirrored over here. And then let's add let's duplicate this and change this for 
the left side. And then change this to mirrored. Down, down, left. So now he faces left. Down, down, left. Down, down, right. Down, down, right. Down, down, left. Down, down, left. Down, down, right. Okay, down, down, left. Down, down, right. Down, down, left. Down, down, right. Down, down, right. Down, down, left. All right. Now, we could also change this and make it a little more concise instead of having these same events here twice we could add just a comparison event above it and compare key sequence equals SSA or key sequence equals SSD so this this character here means or so if either of these is true equals one so if both of them are true it would equal one we could put trigger once I'm pretty sure I don't know if trigger once would work in this case we could try it and then put a blank event and then if it's left set mirrored else unmirror it and then drag this in there as well and if the key presses are within three-fourths of a second change attack and then delete these other ones and when attack is finished set it back to zero so now it's a little more concise as far as like not repeating the same actions now we just have the actions just once so let's try it down down right down down left down down right down down left All right so it works pretty good so that I think that does it for this video it shows you a little com combo that you can do for an attack so maybe in future videos we'll do other combos maybe some jumping things like that or if you want something explained just leave a comment and I could maybe create another video etc so hopefully that was helpful.